Uh, Jeff, talk about your role with the airdrops and, and Nebraska National Guard's role in general. First of all, we, we met with the uh, Cattlemen's Association and uh, had, had a meeting with them. Uh, one of the ranchers, I believe it was Drew Wolf, come out and uh, was identified as needing some immediate help from the Agriculture Department. So the, the Department of Agriculture reached out to NEMA, the Nebraska Emergency Management Association. They, they called over to the National Guard, our side of the house, which I work from the operations center, said, would it be possible to drop some hay bales to some cattle that are stranded in the middle of the river? And I said, well, historically we have done it in the past, but it wasn't, it was in 1949 was the last time that we did this and it was from an airplane. So the accuracy was not so good back then in 1949, but uh, with our helicopters, guess what? We can probably make this happen. So we put together a team. We looked at uh, potentially using the CH-47. It's a Chinook helicopter because they wanted to drop round bales. Back in the day, they were using the square bales, I think, out of the airplane. But today, we wanted to go with the uh, the round bales. And the CH-47 helicopter is a heavy lift asset. We, we weren't sure if we could get it in, you know, especially with the height and stuff. But I, I, I tell you what, the folks working the ground and, and working the Bobcat uh, were amazing. And then our crews, flight engineer and a crew chief, uh, uh, and then the pilots too, we all made sure that we could get that bail in there and it, it worked. It was a tight fit, but uh, we were able to roll it into the back of the helicopter and we got two bales in the back of the, the, the Chinook. And that's the most we could do because those bales weighed about no oh, anywhere between 2,000 to 2,500 pounds a piece. And then from the operational perspective, really when we got over the area, we were able to put the rancher on board with us and kind of look for the cattle because they were displaced. I mean, their feedlot was completely washed out. They're south of Richland and the Platte River had washed out the complete feedlot. It was devastating to see by the air. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know, I was able to see it firsthand and, and they were at a complete loss. We were able to identify a cluster of 60 cattle on one of the islands, and then we found a, another bunch of about 40 in another island. So once we landed, we loaded those hay bales in. We, we had to kind of overfly the cattle and then hover. And, and you've seen our, we, we came to a hover there and just kind of dropped our ramp. And when we dropped the ramp, it made it a lot easier the way the helicopter hovers. It's a little bit tail low. So we were able to just unstrap those bales and they rolled right out the back and uh, bounce a little bit. But the, the cattle were able to get to them. We were able to observe, you know, once that hay, hay bale hit the ground, those get, cattle came to it. So they were pretty hungry, no doubt about it. How many hay bales in, in total did you guys drop? We ended up doing five loads. So that was 10 bales. Mm -hmm. So each load that we did was, was you know, two bales a piece. So 10, 10 bales that afternoon. And it took a little bit because, like I said, it was not a quick process to load those things just because we wanted to do it safely. Those bales could crush somebody if they came rolling back. So it took us a little bit to get in. But once we got into a rhythm and figured out how to strap them down and cinch them and, and get them in the aircraft, uh, it went a lot quicker. So Jeff, for the cattle in a situation it, it, where they're going to be there for a long time and you're going to have to do this repeatedly? Right now, he's got enough feed out there, and we're hoping that the plat continues to decrease. It was just that there was two channels cut on each side of those islands that the cattle, the cattle could not cross. Jeff, I know with this hay drop, that this experience, I know it's very unique, and you mentioned that it hasn't happened since we had that huge blizzard back in the 40s in Nebraska in the western panhandle, and really, I guess, across the entire state. But for you individually, have you experienced, I know this is a unique experience, but what does this kind of rank as experiences uh, since you've been with the Nebraska National Guard? Well, I'll tell you, sir, I've been uh, in the National Guard for 33 years and uh, multiple combat tours, uh, multiple overseas tours, humanitarian missions throughout the world. And uh, this mission struck me the most. I mean, uh, I, I don't know, there, you know, I, I can't express enough how, you know, it's just this is the most rewarding mission I've ever done it, because it's in Nebraska. You know, oftentimes we go down to Houston, Texas. We've gone to Florida for hurricane support. Our folks in aviation, Nebraska Army Aviation, we're supporting our own here in Nebraska and and, and at a great extent. Uh, so it's it's pretty phenomenal. Jeff, there's this there's this picture that I think has been circulating social media of you hugging the uh, one of the farmer's sister. It's Wendy. It, it certainly is an emotional picture. I'm sure that was emotional for you as well. Yes, I, I, I cannot explain enough. I mean, just to see, you know, uh, 
windy, you know, strong, independent, um, you know, farmer that uh, was out there. And it just, at her, you, you could just tell, very stressed and, uh, you know, compassionately. It just, she didn't want to cry. I didn't want to cry. But uh, I tell you, we did both shed a tear. And, and, and the best thing that we could do is comfort each other. And that's what, that's what Nebraskans do. We're there for each other. So it's uh, it was an emotional e- event, no doubt about it.